And God said, Behold, I have given you every herb bearing seed. To you it shall be for food. Genesis 129. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Psalm 78, 25. Everyday Manna with Lisa. Hi, everybody, and welcome to Everyday Manna. Today, I have a special guest, co-host, my son, Aaron. He's going to help me today, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like to cook, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Today, we are going to be making a Cincinnati spaghetti, but Italian style. And we're going to make a dessert, which is a cookie bar, peanut butter, chocolatey type thing that will be delicious. And that's where we're going to get started. Now, I have my oven preheated to 350 degrees. Aaron is going to mix with our mixer one and a half cups of peanut butter. Now, you can use smooth or chunky. Today, I have chosen to use the chunky. You use whichever you like. He's going to mix that with a cup and a half, put that in there, of powdered sugar and about a teaspoon of vanilla. And he's going to just take his mixer and mix that all together until it's light and fluffy. And what you're wanting to do, go ahead and start on low. Push it again. There you go. So you get that powdered sugar mixed in there. Let me show you a little trick. I this is a little the, hint. I can smell the vanilla. Hold on just a minute. If you're at home and you have a bowl that wants to move like his does, take a damp paper towel or a rag or something and put it under there and that holds it still. Or one of those little gripper things works. All right, you can turn it up now and get all that incorporated. While he's doing that, I'm going to take half a roll. You know the, the, the cookie dough that you buy in the dairy section? I'm using half of one of those rolls and save the other half for another use. And I'm gonna pat it in the bottom of an eight by eight dish. Now, you could use oatmeal cookie dough, which is what I really like, but this morning my store was out of oatmeal. And so I'm using sugar cookie. And you by all means can use sugar cookie dough. It's delicious. And just take your hands and press it down in the bottom. I have sprayed this pan with a, uh, a, a baking nonstick spray. And I'm just pressing it down. Okay, turn it up again and get it good and whipped together. Now, this will be a thick mixture, but that's okay. It's getting stuck on the side. That's all right. I'll show you what to do in just a second. You want to pat this out in the bottom just like this. Just pat it out. Two. And then, here, you want me to show you? Wait a minute, let me get, take your little, watch your beaters, and then just kind of scrape down the sides. Okay, turn it all the way up, Erin. All the way? Yeah. We want to beat this till it's really light and airy. Now, you could do this with a stand mixer if you have one, too. But if you have a son that wants to help, why not let them do it? All right, I think that's probably good. Turn it off. There you go. Hit the off button. That right. helps. All right. And then take your beaters out. And probably someone is going to want to lick those beaters, which in my house would be him or daddy, if daddy were here, or Maybe Austin. Austin. And then take your peanut butter mixture and put it over over overneath, over top of your cookie dough layer. And we're going to bake this for about 20 minutes, 25 minutes or so. Then we're gonna to top it with some chocolate chips and we're gonna melt those chocolate chips over top. Let me grab a spoon here. Get them? But we don't wanna put the chocolate on there till just the, the last bit. So you just wanna smooth this out and then we're gonna get this in the oven for about 30 minutes. And this makes a wonderful little chocolate. If you like Reese cups, and I do, this is a dessert for you. This makes just a quick little bar um, dessert that's really, really good. You could top this with any number of things. You could cr uh, crumble up pretzels and put over top would be delicious. And then put your chocolate chips over top with the pretzels. 
would be wonderful. You could take the Rice Krispie cereal, you know, that we all make those Rice Krispie bars, mm -hmm. and you could put some Rice Krispies on top of this layer and then top it with uh, chocolate chips. Either one would be absolutely yummy. This needs to go into a 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes. All right, now our bars are in the oven baking, Erin. And we are going to make an Italian Cincinnati spaghetti. For those of you that don't know what since or Cincinnati or Italian chili. Cincinnati chili, chili spaghetti, for those of you that don't know what Cincinnati chili is, Cincinnati chili is um, a, a, a chili that does not have meat in it, but it is served over spaghetti, and then you top it. You can have it plain. You can have it one way, two way, three way, four way, five way with cheese. Uh, kidney beans, onions, uh, I don't remember all of it. Tomato and sour cream, I think, are the toppings. And you can have it one way or two ways or however you want it. Well, I love it because I love chili over spaghetti, kind of like a chili mac sort of thing. So I thought, well, why could we not take the flavors that I really love, which is Italian food, and kind of create a chili with an Italian twist to it and serve it over spaghetti, and that's what we're going to do today. Aaron is going to chop a small zucchini because zucchini is, is very much equivalent to Italian dressing. So cut off the ends and then slice that and cut it into small pieces, okay? Can you do that? And watch your fingers, please. I will. All right. While he's chopping that, oops. Here, let me show you something here. Hang on just a minute. Let me show you a little hint. We're going to cut our zucchini in half and in half again, because I want it in small pieces, because it's gonna go in a sauce. Oh. And then cut it like that, okay? And then you've got pieces. You can do okay. them one at a time if you want to. I'll do them and one I'm gonna time. dice up an onion. Now in my skillet, you need a large skillet for this. In the skillet is one pound of ground chuck, or ground round, you want something kind of lean. I wouldn't go with the 75% fat beef and one pound of sweet Italian sausage. Now, if you like a little heat to your food, you could use the hot Italian sausage, which has a little bit more kick to it. But I don't like the hot in this. I like the sweet, but if you do, you can use the hot. But this is Italian sausage. Now, sometimes the Italian sausage will come in links and sometimes it comes in the bulk pack like the hamburger meat comes. If you have the links, you still can use those. Just slit the casings and take off the casing, which is the outer part, the outer skin, if you will, um, that the sausage comes in. Throw that away and just use the sausage inside. But this is the bulk that comes already uh, in a package like your ground beef does. And it, for this recipe, actually, it's better. Then it saves you a step but you can use whatever you can find. And you wanna brown both of those meats off and render all of their fat. And I have a pot of water here to cook our spaghetti in in just a minute. How you coming along over there, buddy? Pretty good. Now, if you can find um, the, uh, the, the green peppers that are the Italian peppers, the long, slender uh, peppers, you can use those. I, or you can just use a green pepper which is what we're gonna to use today. You could use the little um, jarred hot cherry peppers if you wanted to, that you can buy in the stores. You really can just mix it up however you like it. Whatever you like in your Italian spaghetti sauce, you can put in this. We're just gonna spice it up instead of with Italian seasonings, we're gonna use chili powder. And I'm gonna do an onion because you know everything's sauce-wise, basically starts with an onion. A lot of Italian sauces start with onion. A lot of dishes do. It's a staple in my house. We're gonna do some programs soon on just how to stock your pantry and staples to keep on hand at all times in your home so you can cook meals 
We've got lots of ideas of things we're going to be doing in the future. Lots of questions that come my way via email. We'll get those together and answer all those questions and all kinds of things. So if you have a question that you would like to see answered on an upcoming program, please do email me um, and let me know. It's on the website, everydaymana.net, and just drop me in. Uh, there's a, a little section up there where you can send us a question or comment, and we'll try our best to answer those questions at a future program. How you doing, buddy? Good. Okay, you want to do half the pepper? Yes, please. Okay. You want to help me? All right, let me get the middle out. You did a good job. You don't have to line them up like little soldiers. I'm making them like a little smiley face. Oh, you're going to make a smiley face. Well, that's okay if you want to do that. Can you do the same thing with this? Can you cut it in strips? Let me show you. Hang on, I'll show you. I'll do half and you do half. Get your kids in the kitchen. Get them in with you. All right, look, Aaron. From the inside, here's a little hint for you. The outside of a pepper has like this skin on it, and it's tougher. If you cut from the inside of a pepper, it is so much easier. So cut it into strips, just like this. You want me to cut it? You want to switch with me? Mm -mm. Good job. Here, watch. Stop just a second. Let me move your zucchini out of the way. Oh yeah. My finger cut. And then we're going to take each one of these little strips and cut it into pieces, Aaron, like this, you see? Okay. Just like that. We're chopping up our, our pepper. If you have a red pepper, that would be delicious in this. Or like I said, you could use the cherry peppers that you get in the um, section of your grocery store where you buy pickles and things like that. I'm going to get a smaller knife. A smaller knife? Yeah. Okay. Why do you want a smaller knife? Little hands, I guess, need smaller knives. He uses big knives most of the time. Yep. Oh, okay, that's fine. A paring knife. All right, that's fine. Now, we're browning our beef and our sausage mixture. This is one of those uh, recipes, too, that maybe you have a smaller family. Now, this will feed easily, you know, six people, eight people. Maybe you don't have that many. I would make the full recipe and then take the leftover sauce, not the spaghetti part, but the sauce and put it in containers and freeze it. And then on a night when you may not have time to cook dinner or you're rushed one evening or something and you want to just take one of those containers out of your freezer and heat it up slowly or take it out the night before, let it thaw and then cook it, you know, just boil some pasta and you've got instant ready-made dinners. You know, and in today's world, we're all busy, and sometimes we need to have those meals prepped up ahead so that it's easy. I do that a lot with sauces, with soup, especially if I make a big batch of, like, vegetable beef soup, and we don't eat it all. I will freeze it in individual containers, and then when I want that flavor, I just heat it up and eat it, and it tastes just like freshly made. Now, we're going to brown this up. This is very, very lean so it's not going to need draining. But if yours um, is fattier and you see a lot of the fat coming out, you can see in here there's really very little. If you need to drain it, you know, do that before you proceed on. But we just need to get this all browned up to where there's no pink in the sausage and the beef. And if you didn't like uh, the sausage, you could, you could use all ground beef, but you really kind of... The point of this dish really is to get that flavor of the Italian um, sausage in there because there's fennel and different spices in there, and it really is very, very good. And I'm serving it over spaghetti, but you could serve it over any kind of pasta shape that you like. Maybe you like penne pasta or linguine or macaroni or whatever you like. It will work with any of it. All right, so that's browned up, and I don't have to drain mine. Anytime, how you doing over there, buddy? Good, watch your fingers, you're doing a good job. Uh, anytime that I work with dried spices like this, this is a chili powder, just a commercially prepared chili powder, which is actually a combination of ground chilies and garlic and oregano and different flavorings. I put it in my sauce before I add any liquid. 
because the oils in the meat drippings will bloom, if that's what you call it, is bloom the flavor of the seasoning. Whereas if I added all my liquid ingredients first, I would not be getting as much of the flavor out of the chili powder as I could. So I add my dried, in, my dried spices mm -hmm. and herbs, and then I just leave, leave it in there for about 30 seconds, blend it all in, and then proceed on. Okay, we're ready. We're gonna add our onions and our pepper and our zucchini. And we're gonna let this simmer for a few minutes. Okay, you ready? Look at those beautifully diced vegetables that you did. You did a really good job, Erin. Watch your fingers, thank you. I did get a question one time from a viewer about this little tool that I'm using. It's called a bench scraper. It's really a baker's tool, but they really are becoming very, very popular now to move your vegetables and food. I have had this one forever. So it, it's, you know, just one I've had for a long time. You can find them anywhere now. They're called bench scrapers, and they really are very, very helpful to move piles of your chopped up vegetables. We're gonna take a quick break. I'm gonna add the rest of these ingredients real quick, and I'm just gonna let this simmer. Uh, let's just take a quick break. Let me get cleaned up, then I'm gonna explain the rest of this. We're gonna let it simmer, and then we're gonna finish off our bars. We'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back. Now our vegetables have just been sauteing for just a couple of minutes. Look how pretty that is. We're gonna add a little salt, about a teaspoon, and some freshly ground pepper, half a teaspoon or so. I do like fresh ground pepper. Maybe you don't, maybe you use the pre-ground stuff. If you are, you know, about half a teaspoon. But I like the fresh ground. There is a world of difference. And nowadays in the grocery stores, you can buy those little, in the spice section, the little grinders that are disposable, and those things are delicious. They, the, the pepper in them is just as good as another pepper mill. I have them at home, I use them all the time. To this, I'm gonna add one can of light red and one can of dark red kidney beans. Because I like beans in my chili. If you don't like beans in your chili, by all means, you can leave them out. But I like the beans in my chili. See, I told you, this makes a lot of sauce. And then two cans, I'll turn it down to simmer. Two cans, these are 15 ounce cans of tomato sauce. Just plain old tomato sauce. And that's it, except for just a little bit of parsley that I'm gonna chop right now. Turn it to low. We're gonna let it simmer for about 15 minutes, 20 minutes. This is a wonderful thing if you wanted to put it to this point in your crock pot and let it simmer all day long on low while you're gone to work. You will come home to the most delicious chili. Mm, it's yummy, and that zucchini just adds a different layer of flavor that helps add to the Italian part of this dish. And then we're gonna make, we're gonna chop up some fresh parsley because you need a little fresh something in there. This is just flat leaf Italian parsley that we're gonna mince up. Now water's to a boil. I'm just gonna cook one pound of spaghetti, just plain old spaghetti noodles that we all know and love. And like I said, if you wanna use a different kind of pasta, you can. Now our bar, cookie bar, is uh, we took it out of the oven and we're gonna put about half a cup 
of mini chocolate chips over top. You, I'm using mini, but you could use whatever you have on hand. Just sprinkle them, Erin, like okay. this. Just sprinkle these over top evenly because what you're wanting this to do is melt and create like a chocolate glaze over top. You can help me, we gotta get back in the oven. And it's gonna go back in the 350 degree oven for about another 10 minutes till the, the chocolate chips melt. Then it will need to cool for a couple of hours. And then it's time to eat them. Oh, sorry. Your hand touched that Scared glass, me. didn't it? Scared me, but it didn't burn. Okay. Here, watch out. Let me show you. Here. Here. Oh. Hold your hand. Over the top. Don't touch the glass. Okay, we're just going to put these lightly over top and then put this straight back in the oven. Now, here is our bar done, our little uh, sugar cookie peanut butter chocolate bar that we put the chocolate chips over and they have melted and softened and we're gonna let that cool before we cut it into bars. And that'll make, this is a very rich dessert. You can easily get 16 bars out of that dessert. Just let that cool. And again, you can use an oatmeal cookie base or I use sugar cookie, but you could use oatmeal, you could use chocolate chip, you could use whatever kind of cookie that you like and put it on the bottom. And then we mixed peanut butter with vanilla and powdered sugar for the middle layer and then chocolate on top. It is very, very rich. You won't want a whole lot of it. Now, our sauce is done. We cooked some just plain spaghetti, Erin, and we've drained it. And I just put a little bit of olive oil on mine to keep it from sticking together. And we're gonna serve our wonderful Italian Cincinnati chili over our spaghetti. This is a mixture of Italian sweet sausage, ground beef, oops, we spilled a little bit, um, some green pepper, some onion, zucchini, red kidney, dark red kidney beans, and light red kidney beans, and chili powder, and tomato sauce. And we just simmered that all together with some salt and pepper, and let that simmer for about 20, 25 minutes. And we're gonna garnish it with some shredded Parmesan cheese. If you like cheddar cheese on your uh, chili, you could put cheddar cheese, you could put some fresh tomato on there, you could put some sour cream on there, however you like your chili. But I like mine with just a little bit of Parmesan cheese because it is an Italian spaghetti. And there's our dish. I would serve this with maybe a green salad dressed with whatever kind of dressing you like. I like like a lemon vinaigrette type dressing on the side or some crusty bread. You could use just a loaf of bread, Erin, and put butter and maybe some cheese or whatever you like, an herb spread over your butter. Serve that alongside with a loaf of good crusty bread and then dessert and you have got dinner ready to go. Again, if you make this full recipe and as you saw, this makes a lot of sauce, you could easily freeze part of that sauce for a second meal later on whenever you're ready and it's good to go. All you would need to do is thaw it and heat it, cook some pasta and there you go. Thank you for joining with me, Erin. 
I love it when you cook with me. Thank you. Did you have a good time today? Uh-huh. Yeah, you ready to eat? Uh-huh. We're going to go. Thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you next time on Everyday Manna. Thank you for watching Everyday Mana with Lisa. This program is made possible by viewers like you. Your support is continually needed to keep Christian programming on the air. Please send your best financial gift to Living Faith Television in care of Everyday Mana, P.O. Box 1867, Abingdon, Virginia, 24212.